All right, we are live. Let me know if you can see me and hear me okay. Let's, uh, let's get started. Uh, so, basically what I wanted to do in this stream is someone had reported to me um, that when they went to my kind of, you know, courses or products page on my blog, um, someone was visiting the workshops and <laughs> they got a, this isn't working. Um, this workshops by JMac was a thing I did probably three years ago now. Um, I, I sp that summer I did, you know, a couple like online workshops, um, most of which were free. Uh, so there's still, the recordings for them are still out there and available. And because of that, um, I'd like to have this site, you know, still work. <laughs> so basically, uh, it stopped working. I think when I upgraded the web server to PHP 8 uh, about two or three months ago. Uh, so again, it's not a site I'm actively using. It wasn't top of mind. Uh, and so for those reasons, I just didn't know. And unfortunately, a user... Um, you know, let me know that, uh, hey, the site doesn't work. It's kind of funny because on the Shifty Plan dashboard, of course, I have a plan as the creator uh, of Shift. Um, Jess and I have, you know, repositories that we manage that are Laravel. So, of course, you can see all of our courses here and so forth. Um, but there's this, uh, you know, glaring uh, exclamation point here that this is, you know, an outdated version of Laravel and hey, run the Laravel 6.x shift. And I've just been ignoring this for months and months and years <laughs> at this point. Uh, so again, I laugh because, you know, as the creator of shift, it's kind of funny. Um, you know, I don't even have some projects updated. So I just thought it'd be a good opportunity to not only upgrade this site, uh, but demo, of course, shift. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward site. I was just looking at the Composer JSON. Again, I haven't gotten in here in a couple years. Uh, so this code um, is pretty straightforward app. It's, it's much like Layer Streams, uh, if you all are familiar with that. It's just kind of like a workshop listing recording. There is a payment thing when I was doing it. I'm not even worried that that works anymore because, you know, I don't even think you can buy anything since there's not any new courses. So that doesn't even really concern me. The unfortunate thing is, though, there are no tests uh, for this. This was, again, a couple years ago. It was a super quick site. I don't think I drove it out. Uh, obviously, I did not drive it out in any kind of TDD fashion. So when we're all done, uh, I would like to, if we have time, run the test generator shift to generate a foundation of tests because, hey, I might, you know, with COVID and everything, I haven't been to a lot of in-person workshops. Uh, mm -hmm you know, I'd like to maybe start this up again in the, in the, you know, winter or something, who knows, I might do a few workshops is the point. So let's get this thing updated. I hear a bunch of chat. Hello, everyone. Hey, D, hey, JT, Adrian, Jeffrey, what's going on? Scrup, Scruptor? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know Scruptor. That's, that's an interesting name. Uh, if you got a real name, let me know in the chat. I'll say hi to you. Uh, okay. Cool. Let's let's follow the beautiful UX of Shift and run uh, the Laravel um, 6.x Shift. Now, uh, I'll kind of take this opportunity. We, we've probably all seen Shift at this point, and I, I don't want to be like super salesy or anything. I want to. What I want to do though is kind of show you the reason I'm using Shift is I want to show you kind of how I use Shift, and maybe that'll give you some tips and tricks for being able to. Um, you know, use shift effectively yourself and kind of spread the word and, and you know, again, some, some hot tips for, for shift as the creator. So I'm gonna push uh, a branch. The first thing I like to do is push a Laravel upgrade branch. Even though shift makes its own branches, I like to just kind of push all this separately uh, and then do the upgrades there. So uh, it's nice. it's a nice little uh, trick that I do. It's in one of the videos, but again, Instead of doing directly off master, I'm going to do Laravel upgrade because I want to take this all the way to Laravel 8.x. So I'm going to do all that work on Laravel upgrade, and then I'll open a PR for Laravel upgrade into master at the end. So we're going to shift the Laravel upgrade branch multiple times to get all the way to, to um, 8.x. So this is kind of the first step. 
Of course, I don't have to pay, so we're just gonna run it. We'll follow this all the way through. Um, and so when this pops up, uh, let's do JSON, or well, let's go to workshops. You know what? I don't even need all that. Let's do git open. There we go, that's what I want. So this pull request, <laughs> all the dependency upgraders that used to run for this, I need to close all those. Let's do this. Mark as closed. Hopefully that one's not done yet. All right, cool. Scrupter is Patrick. Much easier. Hey, Patrick, how's it going? Hey, Samuel. It's morning for me, not evening. Good evening to you. Where are you in the world? I'm curious where it's evening. Uh, let's close the other. Okay, so the 6.f sh uh, shift is ready. So let's, let's take a, a peek at this while those others are closing. Okay, so again, we know the drill. Did it all on a separate branch. Check this branch out. Okay, let's do that. So git fetch origin. Git, whoops, git check out that. Clear. All right, let's kind of review these. Uh, adopt the coding style. All cool with me. Not going to worry about that. I'm glad to follow that style. Shifted some core files. Leveraged the new home constant. The configuration files were shifted. This is an interesting thing. It defaulted the files. We'll look at this here in just a second. Uh, Shift could not upgrade the following files since they differed. Interesting. Okay. So I probably have some customizations to these two files. We're going to look at those here in just a second. Same with these files. It didn't seem like it could leverage those. This is the part I want to talk about uh, just real quick. Something Shift does in recent versions, starting with 6x, 7x, 8x, all future or all modern versions of Laravel Shift do this default config files. And what this attempts to do is any file that it finds uh, to be the same as a default version of a config file before, it will default it. This means that theoretically you don't have any customizations to this file unless you were relying on the old defaults. Um, so because of that, um, you know, this is sometimes a controversial one, but the thing is the configuration files change all the time. They change in patch releases, minor versions. I mean, they've changed, I think, 23 times since Laravel 8's release. So keeping up with these is a real mess. So the reason Shift is a little heavy handed here is for that. One of these configuration lines that's missing, you know, this or this, honestly can break your app and you'll spend hours trying to figure out what it is because there's no kind of clear error message that you're missing a configuration option. Uh, it's just like, you'll get some really obscure error that like reference to throttle cannot be null or something like that, or some variable cannot be null. And you're like, why is it null? Um, so it's just, it's just a little goofy. So anyway, this is a, conf this is a thing. If you ever see this happen, you might just want to take a quick peek, um, you know, at what, what Laravel did with these config files. So you always want to review these again, it's called out, uh, in the comments down here to, to make sure that you, you know, do so. Okay. Predis, I'm not using Redis, so I don't need to worry about the Predis Predis change, uh, shift. Again, modern versions of shift bump your dependencies. So because this is such a straightforward project, I don't have to worry about this. It got Stripe, it got Vimeo. Shift tracks maybe 300 popular of the most popular packages now. So it even gets things like Stripe and this Vimeo Laravel library. It gets all the spossy packages, all that stuff. Um, looks like I'm using must verify email in my models and then this action helper is probably something I want to take a look at. The rest of this stuff is pretty straightforward. So let's let's start cleaning this up. So do I have GDF on here? I do. All right. So I've got this little helper because I do some consulting for Shift as well. So I have this little helper where I can say like, give me the default version uh, of this file. And so if we look, it'll just pick up what I want to pick up. Um, so. That's good. So let's just kind of do that with the rest of these. And so what I'm doing here is I know that I'm going to shift multiple versions. So I don't want to see these same core files conflict. So I just default them. And kind of like we talked about with the config bit, like if I default them, I know I'm going to get the maximum automation out of shift. So this is just like a little trick. If you're going to be going multiple versions, just default your files. And then at the very end on 8.x, we'll clean them up. 
uh, just once. So instead of fighting shift and fighting the framework and fighting the changes and doing them multiple times for every single version you're upgrading, just do them once at the end. Just defer that work to the very end. It's gonna be a lot easier to go back and drop those customizations in once than it is, of course, each time you run shift. Now this must verify one, I think, let's just take a quick peek at ourselves because that's not, that's probably kind of a false positive here. It's referencing this contract, but I'm not using it. Um, it's just something that shift added. So that's, that's actually, I'm gonna give this little thumbs down so I can look at that as the creator of shift later. I feel like it should be a bit smarter um, about that because we're not implementing any of those methods. Not in the user one anyway, so it could probably be a little fancier there. So this is done. I'm gonna delete that. The home constant's done. I'm gonna delete that. Uh, we don't wanna revert those, so that's all good, thanks. We don't do use Predis. I'm just, I'm just kind of cleaning these up. We know that everything's updated, so that's good. This is thumbs down. I'm gonna leave that. Uh, carbon's fine. I'm not. I know that I'm not using it directly in here, and I, I trust that Shift does a pretty good job of that. Let's fix this one. Uh, there's a route action that I need to take a look at. Okay, so what happened in um, 6.x is they got a little stricter about uh, the routes. So before you might have been doing something, you know, just like this. And because of the new strictness, if this didn't match up with any kind of like implicit model binding, it wouldn't know, like Laravel stopped pre-filling those in order of what the parameters were. Now they have to match the names like exactly. So I need this. So fortunately I was doing this already, but that's what this message is talking about. Any of the bound parameters uh, don't just kind of get dumped in in order. That's the way Laravel used to do it pre six and now post six. It still does that for like implicit model bindings or so forth, but anything additional, it's just best to kind of explicitly name those. So those uh, parameter names and your, your arguments here and keys match up. So that should be fine. I don't think I'm using action or route anywhere else in here. Yeah, so that's fine. Uh, so checkbox. I'm not using any string keys, so I don't need to worry about the optimization. I'm not using Spark or any of that stuff. Uh, and I'm not doing queues, so I don't need to worry about the number of tries. So there we go. So we're done. Uh, let's clean this up. So git add um, all the files that we defaulted, git commit dash m, and I like to call this default core files. That's just my little convention. That way I can reference uh, this commit later and we'll just go through and see what my customizations were and put them right back in one time at the very end. What did I do in Composer? Oh, that was weird. Nah. Okay, so that was it. That was the only change we needed to make. Uh, there's that little thing. I'm gonna keep this up in the browser. Let's squash merge this. I don't really care about all the changes necessarily. Uh, we'll merge that into, whoa. What's wrong with you, GitHub? Let's try this again. Squash merge. There we go, delete that, and let's go back to shift. I wonder, there we go. Oh, not rerun. I was expecting to see a run seven there. I wonder why that's not an option. I'll have to look at that. Purchase. Uh, let's copy, this is a new feature. Let's show this off as well. I can copy this clone URL. Let's do the Laravel, whoops, Laravel upgrade. 7.x, cool, check out and run, run it. All right, and I'll check the chat while we're waiting on that to run. Afternoon, hey Steven, how's it going? Afternoon, where are you in the world for afternoon? All right, let's kind of look at those defaulting things here for a second. Okay, so we can leverage this new constant with workshops. We'll make sure to backfill that later. Same thing here. Show registration form. Looks like I just overwrote this to do like a fancy workshop ID that you're registering for. So that's pretty straightforward. Looks like I don't require name for people that uh, or for registration. So that's fine. We'll drop that back here in a minute. 
Again, the redirect can now leverage this new constant, so that's nice cleanup of code. A little cleanup of code by the layer val there. Trust proxies just got moved, so that's totally fine. That got substituted, that's totally fine. So this registered middleware is what my customization was. So again, very minor customizations to backfill here um, later, and this goes to workshop index. So again, when I change that to workshops, uh, I think we're gonna be all fine and we can leverage that constant. So I'll have even less customizations. And the thing is, if I would have carried these from each version of Laravel, I might not have adopted you know, this constant, for example. So this is another you know, recommendation for like, letting shift do the work, letting it do the magic. If you know you're going multiple versions, honestly, just, just go through these pretty quickly. Like you don't need to um, you know, carry that pain every time. Uh, okay, so we shifted more core files, converted to throwable, added the Laravel UI dependency. Cool, that's uh, in Laravel 7. They don't include the auth stuff anymore, so you need that to get all those auth uh, traits and so forth that are used uh, by the auth. So we know that we're using registration and everything, so we want to keep that. Okay, so it updated the handler. That's all good. Uh, it added the UI package. We just talked about that. That's good. Mail driver became mail mailer. I'm going to trust that it did that in the config stuff. Let's just check. There we go, look at that. And it did it in all my files because I actually do commit my uh, ENV files. So I don't do any other uh, deployment or server level ENV variables. So that should be all good. Again, it bumped the dependencies. That should be good. Uh, it updated PHP unit. That's fine. It's not required. I'm not doing any API models or anything. So I think I think this is gonna be okay. There was a slight way in which they formatted dates that changed. I know I don't use Symfony directly, that's fine. And of course, Laravel has reached, Laravel 7 has reached end of life. So we don't wanna stop here, we wanna keep going to eight. Absolutely no changes here because of the way I defaulted those files. If I would not have defaulted those files, I would have got more messages that said, hey, your you know kernel, uh, didn't match up, so you know we weren't able to make all the changes, review it yourself kind of thing. Uh, and we didn't get any of those because we defaulted it and we're just gonna do it at the end. So again, we let shift do all of its automation, full extent, 100%, uh, no, no manual effort in this case whatsoever. Uh, all right, so with that said, let's go back uh, and run the Laravel 8 shift. So we'll purchase that, supposedly. Workshops by JMAC, Laravel upgrade, run it. All right, that's queued up. Let's close these other pull requests while we're waiting. That way we get a nice clean option here. So we're gonna get to eight. We'll go through the eight comments and then we'll backfill uh, that stuff from the customizations over here and We'll push it live because hey, it's already broken anyway. So why not, um, why not push it live and see if it works? Um, and if so, then I'll run things like the fixer and uh, maybe the test generator to um, have a little more confidence in the future that it works uh, instead of you know pushing it live and crossing my fingers. All right, there's the Laravel eight shift. That was super fast. Okay, so. Lots more stuff happening here. Let's let's talk about some of these because these are actually really cool things inside of uh, Shift. And of course, if anybody has any questions uh, about whoops about um, what Shift does or the internals, just throw it in the chat. I'm glad to talk about that too. Okay, so we got the core files, exception handler. Um, it just, anything it says shift, these are all just very minor things that it's, it's doing here. This one though, super cool. Let's talk about some of these. Um, Class-based factories, that's gonna be cool. The namespace cedars is pretty good. Upgrading to mix, that's awesome. Uh, so let's kind of talk about some of these. Uh, something I found uh, just the other day actually uh, out is that the old options uh, syntax it does work in Laravel 8, but not for routes. Like you can't register your uses, right? The old like options array where like inside here, you might say something like, you know, get uh, and then an array and you'd say uses home controller index. Well, now with a new class-based factory, or sorry, now with a new class-based routes or tuple syntax, 
uh, for your controller actions. Um, you can't do that anymore inside of a uses. It's it's a little bit of an edge case. You can still use options for like your group middleware and or sorry, your grouped routes, but you can't use it for the individual routes. So for those reasons, I updated shift to actually just convert you to fluent anywhere. This used to be a fixer task, or it still is a fixer task, but it used to not be done in the 8.x shift, but with enough people coming back to me and saying, hey, I had to change a couple of these manually, um, I just went ahead and did it. This is the modern way to write routes. Uh, there's really no reason to use this old array syntax anymore. Uh, it's just so much more fluent uh, to see, you know, named middleware in the group, uh, only these, you know, instead of this only store in an options array, you know, comma separated. It's just, it's a lot cleaner. Uh, so. This happens uh, now in Laravel 8.x shift. So I would go so far as to say the 8.x shift is probably the most thorough, involved, and honestly, like impressive. Like when I see this, I'm even impressed sometimes. Like I use shift to help clients and do some consulting work, but also my own projects. And like when it catches stuff like this 100%, I'm just like, man, that's awesome. That saved me so much time. So anyway, um, the next big one though, uh, is actually swapping to uh, class, like class-based routes or that tuple syntax. And so what we're talking about here is instead of this string syntax with kind of that action uh, at symbol there, uh, you now pass it a tuple or an array with a uh, first uh, element being the name of the class. And in this case, we're using PHP's kind of static class reference. And then the second, uh, element of that array being the method or the uh, controller method that you want to uh, use. And together that now makes the action. So we see that shift did all this, uh, but it not only did all this, it also imported um, those things as well. So that's super cool. Another nice little handy one here. Uh, dates was kind of quietly deprecated in eight and I expect it to probably be removed in nine. So this is something again, shift just like treating warnings like errors when you're coding, shift treats deprecations like things that you should go ahead and do. So even though if this is truly removed in Laravel 9, if this property is removed, of course the Laravel 9 shift will do it. But again, you have an eye to the future with this 8.x shift. So that's, that's super cool um, to kind of go ahead and change this out as well. This is a workbench task uh, or in the fixer as well. So if you haven't done this and you're doing this in your app and you want to, the fixer will pick it up and then there's an individual workbench task as well uh, if you want to get it that way. So if you're still doing that in your apps, check it out. Another huge thing the Laravel 8 shift does is if you have, uh, of course, a lot of tests, I don't for this app, but it still picked up the default um, factory, the user factory, and converted it to the new class-based factory. So if you have a test suite for your application, which is awesome, again, another massive thing uh, that Standalone, this would make the automation of shift uh, worth the $19 in my opinion. This is just one of like five things that we've already seen that's pretty cool. Namespacing all your cedars. I do have a couple cedars that namespace those and moved them to the new cedars folder. Uh, so again, massive. Here's another massive one, uh, converting to mix six. Uh, so now it gets rid of all that old cross EMV, all those old dependencies and drops in the new mix six stuff, which we should check this. This is not always 100%. So we'll definitely check that out here in a second. So interface the class two, class based factories. We're good there. Um, I'm not, I don't have any failed jobs, so we're good there. Um, I'm definitely not using AWS or changing any of the file system drivers, although there should be a comma right there. I'm just going to take a little picture of that so I can fix that up. That's why I love dog fooding shift as well is because, you know, you use it and you see little stuff like that. And you make those little tweaks, that little polish that, you know, people may not notice, but they also notice when it's wrong. And so to have it right, again, makes, makes it just feel like there's a lot of care that went in to your product. And uh, I think that's important. Okay, so we definitely want to check this out. This is a warning comment, so I want to slow down here and check that out for sure. Uh, I'm just going to default the PHP unit file because, again, I don't even have tests, so we'll just pick that up ourselves. So uh, to that point, let's get on the branch here. Git fetch, fetch origin. Git check out that. 
All right, and then GDF uh, 8.x. So this is git default file. <laughs> so anytime I want to default those files, uh, I'll just kind of bring that up. So we'll do PHP uh, unit. And again, that'll pull it down from Laravel's source repo and uh, for that particular tagged version and, and, and uh, give me that file. So I know I have the absolute latest. Uh, again, I do this enough where I just kind of made that little helper curl command to go get that file. Um, okay, again, I don't have any tests, but uh, we can run it in parallel now. That's awesome, but I'm not using it. And then finally, congratulations, you're running the latest version. Check out the uh, Laravel Fixer test generated, which we will hear in just a minute. Uh, so let's close that for now. Let's check out Mix. So I'm going to rm, or well, let's let's do this. Uh, git add php unit, git commit dash m. Uh, let's uh, default php, or well, yeah, default php unit dot xml. That's fine. All right, rm rf node modules and package lock. There's just, I hate messing with NPM. Like this is what you have to do to make sure you don't have any conflicts. Like it's so ridiculous. Like Composer's so much better by comparison. I can run Composer update and I know that it's going to just give me the latest, you know, of on honoring my version constraints, of course, but there's no such thing really in NPM land. Like there is an NPM update, but like it's not, it doesn't function the same. And npm install doesn't function the same either. It'll it'll honor your lock file, but not pick up new stuff. And it's just, I found that like the surefire way is to blow it away, which is just, it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad to be honest. You got to think npm is probably more widely used than Composer. I'm just surprised. Again, it doesn't have a better experience. Mm. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but whatever. Okay, we've got npm audit fix. That's not necessarily related to what I'm doing, but now what I want to see is can I run npm run dev and it actually work? So it's running mix. Let's see if this actually works. Yes, it does. It kicked out a, it's a rather large CSS file, but I know that I have some background patterns in them, some, some sugar love there. Um, and those are pretty large data URLs that are stuffed in the CSS. So that doesn't surprise me that that's actually pretty darn big. Um, but the point is it worked. So git add, oh, I got a yarn file. That's interesting. Uh, I wasn't even using yarn. Something under the covers must have been using it. Whatever, git add, git commit dash m npm update, we'll call it. Git push origin head. Okay. Let's backfill our customizations, and then let's push this live with our fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, so what I want to do is leverage this new constant, and we see that anytime we've logged in or registered or done anything, we want to go to this workshops. So the first thing we can do here is go to the route service provider, and let's change this to that. Oops, that. All right, so that customization's fine. This customization's fine. Let's bring this show registration form back. So this is our register controller. All right. And I'm just going to drop it in here. And really, what I like to do here is call this um, override. This just kind of, like, I have this in PHP Storm, but I like kind of doing this. I used to do that in here at doc. That's where that came from. But I like doing this to kind of demonstrate that like, hey, I'm, I'm kind of breaking like core Laravel. Um, I'm overriding like some core Laravel components. So I just like calling that out. It makes future upgrades easier just to have that little tag that like, this is something Laravel gives me, but I'm, I've customized it in some way. So it reminds me to take a bit of a closer, closer look at things, right? So uh, let's also make sure those signatures the same. It's actually a little bit different. I'm injecting the request. That probably is still okay. That's interesting though that it's a bit different. And then of course we need to get rid of name and everything's under models. So name is gone. And I don't really care about those doc blocks, um, but I'll be a good kid and fix this up. There we go. 
All right, cool. What else do we have? Route service provider, workshops is fine. There's no change here because I've updated this to go to this and the removing of the constructor uh, was something Laravel did. This is fine, just move the order of that. Same thing here, bindings became substitute bindings. It's totally fine. We added a new password confirm, but I do need my registered custom middleware. So let's go to kernel and HTTP kernel. Let's drop this back in. And I think we're almost there. I'm gonna trust that workshops index is the same as workshops. Uh, so let's check the web middleware just to make sure that is accurate. Workshops index would be slash workshops. So yeah, we're totally fine there. So again, that constant is saving the day. So pretty much four out of five of our customizations that we used to be doing, the framework now allows us to do without any customizations. Uh, and I consider registering the kernel stuff not really a customization. So that's that's just kind of standard in any app. So yeah, that that's pretty nice. We really should only have changed like two files here, which is about right. Well, three files, because we updated the constant in route service provider. So I'm not gonna review these. Uh, let's just do git add uh, dot git commit dash m and then backfill customizations is what I normally say here. Just kind of lets me know, hey, what are the things I'm customizing? Okay, and I think at this point, let's try to run composer update now. I think at this point we can probably try to push it live. All right. Uh, Hey Asim, how's it going? Adriana, a bundle would be cool. You can't bundle shifts together, but they don't they don't run together. And that's on purpose. Um, you would really, there's a higher risk that you would end up with like a big kind of upgraded mess or a bunch of files at once, like, like we saw with 6.x saying like, oh, this file was customized. Oh, this file wasn't upgraded. Oh, here's here's all 20 of your configs that it got overwritten. It, it would feel a little more daunting. Um, it sounds counterintuitive, but I believe very much so that it is faster to do them incrementally like we've seen. I would have been much more skeptic, much slower to review that massive PR. It just would have felt larger, right? I mean, think about it, 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 even outside of upgrading, outside of shift, if you receive a PR and there's 200 files changed, you're probably not gonna be as thorough. You're not gonna be excited about reviewing that. It's gonna be too much noise, right? If you get a PR that you code review with five files changed or 15 or whatever, and some clear comments and atomic commits like shift gives you, like much more digestible, you know, you're gonna tackle that. Um, so again, it's 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 just kind of like dangling that carrot. I, I just believe it's it's a better approach. A couple people have talked about that though, but that's why I don't do it and I won't, <laughs> won't do it. Uh, okay, so Composer works, PHP Artisan, PHP Artisan route list. So, okay, this is my, this is what I do with a smoke test. If Artisan's running, if route list is running, I kind of trust this. And again, anything at this point is better than a server error. So let's, um, let's go ahead and commit this up. So we'll just do git add dash u, git commit dash m, composer update, and then git push origin head. I am going to just turn off my screen share temporarily because I need to log into the server so we can deploy this properly. So give me just one second here. I think if I do this, nope. I just muted something. That is not what I meant to do. I think I might have muted myself. <laughs> I'm assuming, let me know if you can hear me in the chat. I, it looks like the message went away, so I think I fixed that. Um, ah, there we go, that's what I'm after. Hey everybody. Okay, now let's make sure I can deploy. Uh, yeah, I think this should be good. Or well, you know what, I don't think that's good. Hold on just a second, deploy. Um, where is this? 
I think this is just this, is what it says. All right. Let me sh deploy that. Can still hear me. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, let me sign in the server. <laughs> all right, ssh c bar dub 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 workbench. Okay, I think we're in a I think we're in a safe place here. Let's let's um, get the sharing back. All right, there we go. Back to the default page. Okay, so we should be good here. We've composer updated. No um, fancy stuff there. All right, so I'm in the server now on one of my web servers here in the workshops by JMac, and we're just going to run composer update no dash dev. And yes, I'm going to run it as root because I'm crazy. And not Laravel shift workshops by jmac.com. Okay, so currently a 500. Again, anything's better than 500. Uh, worst case scenario, we make another 500, but I'm optimistic, maybe minus the front end assets uh, working. So this is running, and I've just got a little optimizer script here to clear everything and bust all the caches. Refresh, boom. Oh, look at that. Looks so good. Way better than that 500. Okay, so in 30 minutes we upgraded, uh, and a lot of that was me talking in fairness, so in less than 30 minutes we upgraded from Laravel 5.8 to 6.x with, especially without test, having a pretty fair amount of confidence that we got every little tiny nuance uh, from the automation of shift to make sure um, that that uh, all works out. So again, here's the site. Uh, again, pretty old schedule. You can see um, you know, some of these were free though, some of these were whatever. Uh, it looks like there actually is Stripe. I guess you could still buy an old one, technically speaking. Um, mingle in Slack. Yeah, so I mean, I'd want to update this again. It's a, it's a super old site. Uh, let's make sure I can register, though, real quick. We'll just kind of do this manually. So where is the register? Oh, I bet you register to watch. Here we go. Yeah, this is this is super tiny. So there's my W equals 1. So let's just, uh, let's throw in like, I guess orders. Let's see if orders is here. Let's just make a crappy password and try to create the account. Uh-oh, okay, so we do have an error here. So let's uh, production class app user. Oh, you know what that is? That is one of our default files. Nope, not there. Where? Where would I be referencing users? Somewhere something got defaulted to user even though I have it under models. Let's do under, oh, it's indexing. Good old PHP storm. Let's, the fastest way to find this is waiting until it's done indexing. So I'm gonna check the chat because I hear some bubbles. Great work with shift. Oh, thank you, yeah, Patrick. All right, I think it's done indexing. So to find this crappy reference, I'm gonna leverage the power of PHP Storm. I'm gonna run an undefined uh, inspection, undefined class on the app folder. And exactly what I expect, that register controller, which I defaulted myself. Apparently I was just not as thorough in fixing those uh, references. So that was my bad. Uh, and again, normally I would run this uh, when I was done upgrading. And it looks like card, stripe error card is not, it doesn't like that one either. Um, I think they changed these to like exceptions now. Stripe, it's like uh, API exception. Where are you Stripe? Let's see what they have. I know they call it something. Stripe exception, card exception, yeah. Why isn't that not auto-filling for me? Exception, card exception, there we go. That's the right one. Okay. All right, let's redeploy this. And let's get back into the server. Workshops by JMac. Uh, let's just run that optimize again. Shouldn't need it, but let's do it anyway. 
And let's go back. And it shouldn't have added us with that bit, so let's just try it again, shall we? There we go. I'm in. I registered, and I'm able to get all those lists, and it looks like they're all passed, so not much to do, but there's my learn regular expressions. And here's the video, and available for download or to watch, because it's free. So if you want to learn about regular expressions, this workshop is out here and freely available. So again, some of these are free. In fact, I should probably just go back and make all of them free, but a lot of the Git ones and, and some of the initial Laravel ones are free. Uh, PHP unit one's free if you want to learn a little bit about testing. So again, there is value in having these workshops, um, having this site up, even though a lot of this stuff is uh, older, uh, but it does appear to function. So I'm going to call that complete. Let's uh, drop out of the server and add the rest of these things. Um, let me finish adding these and We'll quit that, git commit dash m, um, fix references, git add dot, git commit dash m, uh, update, deploy, script. I just had the wrong server reference. It was an old reference. That's how old this site was. It was just pointing to like the original, uh, original stack there. Uh, git push origin head. I hear the chat. I will jump in there in just a second and answer any questions. I just want to get this merged so we can keep hacking. Because I've got, what time is it? It's 40 minutes. I've got 20 minutes, so let's let's keep rocking here. So we'll squash merge this. It's just upgrading to Laravel 8.x. Shift, ah, come on. Squash merge, don't need any of that. Delete it. Okay. All right, so I want to run the fixer next to show that, but let's, um, well, you know what? Let's get the fixer running first. I should have, I thought there was something here to say like run the next shift. I'm going to have to look into why it's not doing that. Uh, but in the meantime, let's bring these up in the background because I want to run them. Uh, well, here's what, first of all, first of all, get, get checkout master, get fetch origin, get pull, or well, get merge origin, Laravel upgrade. All right, cool. So everything's on master now. Git push origin head. I'm not even going to make a PR for that because we've already kind of tested it as best we could, did it live. Um, so now let's run the test generator uh, on Jason McCreary, workshops by JMac, and master is fine this time. We'll run this one directly against master since it's a single uh, shift. Or, well, sorry, I want to run the fixer first. So let's do Jason McCreary, workshops by JMac, master. Let's run the fixer first and see what it does. All right, while it's waiting, let me check the chat, sorry. Uh, looks good with shift, thanks. Uh, what was the PHP storm command to find under? Yeah, okay, so. Um, you could run it on your whole project if you want. Uh, that's going to give you a lot of noise, in my opinion. So I highlight the app directory, uh, and then basically I'm on a Mac, I do uh, option command shift I, that's to run an inspection by name, or I can highlight it and go up to code and down here to um, run inspection by name. Uh, and then in that point, it is undefined class. So that's gonna find anywhere where you're doing some kind of class reference that's not defined. Now you have to remember with Laravel, um, and packages and facades and stuff, you may get uh, a lot of noise here. This is actually one of the reasons I like to uh, import facades is because it, it kind of lessens uh, a lot of that noise. And you've actually noticed the framework doing that itself now. Uh, this isn't my code, this is the registration controller. So even Laravel imports them. So, you know, some people will do things like you know, this, and that's referencing the alias, the global alias that Laravel gives you, but it's actually not something that can be statically analyzed because without a plugin or helper, helper uh, you know, the IDE just doesn't know, like from a PHP perspective. So I like importing these, plus it gives you auto completion because of all these fancy doc blocks uh, that they've added the methods for and, and the return types and everything. So um, it's much cleaner to do that. You'll get a lot less noise there. I strongly encourage you to do that with your site. It, it, uh, it definitely, or your projects, it definitely reveals 
not only potential errors like we saw, but if there are errors and you've never noticed them, maybe that's dead code. So now you can maybe remove that code. Maybe it's an old controller you never finished. You artisan made it, but you know didn't actually use it. So there's just there's a lot there. Uh, it's it's a really nice uh, command to be run. All right, what else do we have in the chat? Uh, if you make them free, I'll binge why. <laughs> yeah, I'll take a look. Um, I definitely think there's an opportunity to make some of those free. I may not make all of them, but maybe some of like the introductory Laravel ones, you know, could be free, and then, you know, the later ones, the advanced stuff, um, leave the twelve bucks. I mean, whatever. But yeah, I, I think I might do some more of those here in a couple months. Maybe when I get bored in the winter around the holidays, as always. A good opportunity. Uh, okay, let's go back. I'm sure that fixer ran by now, so let's try to finish these two in the last few minutes. Uh oh, where's my fixer? Oh, psh, I never hit run. What an idiot. All right. Well, let's give that just a sec. I thought I was running it in the background, but I was not. It's It shouldn't take that long. Probably less than a minute. Let's just there it is. Less, that was super fast. Okay, so I don't expect many changes here because, again, that Laravel 8 shift was so thorough um, now with, like, converting the routes and the class dates and all that kind of stuff. Like, there really shouldn't be um, that much that this does. So we got to modernize Blade Directives. That's awesome. Convert validation rules. So let's just kind of take a quick peek um, at these. Some of these are nice. Leverage the injected, injected request object. So... Yeah, that's a nice little helper there. Uh, instead of the CSRF field, just use the blade directive. So this is a nice little thing the fixer does. Uh, Laravel offers many built-in blade directives, including yada, yada, yada. Um, go check them all out. But here's uh, what shift did for you automatically. And that is a workbench task as well, so that's pretty nice. This is just a tiny one. I remember Muhammad talking about this on Twitter probably about a year ago, uh, but just that he preferred um, the array kind of syntax of these. So I just built built again a little task which is in the workbench but the workbench gives you 50 plus tasks individual tasks that you can run think of the fixer like a curated kind of Laravel preferred way to write your code and so it just takes 20 of those tasks and packs them together into like one kind of built-in shift so if you didn't want to like go buy a license to the workbench you just kind of wanted to run this once on your project and kind of learn and and format your code and then do it yourself from there then that's where that's where the fixer kind of has a place. So this is just another small example. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, let's see here. So leverage the okay. So instead of instead of doing the request helper, this is just kind of a preference. This can be disabled again. This is just kind of a a preference of the fixer. It's not a requirement within Laravel. Of course, you can write the code either way. Uh, but I personally find it a bit cleaner here. Um, so this this is an option here. And then just a tiny little one there. Again, instead of using the helpers, uh, just kind of use those fluent uh, chains there. So all this looks, whoops, all this looks really good. I'm going to go ahead and merge this. Let's see what else it says. <laughs> That's funny. So one of the things the fixer does is say, hey, uh, you don't have any tests. You should have some tests because you know, this made a lot of refactoring changes and you can't truly refactor without tests. Uh, so run the test generator, which we will. So I'm gonna give that some love. All right, anyway, let's go ahead and merge this. Ah, don't quit. All right, delete that branch. And now let's run this. Everything's merged into master now on the fixer. So we're good. Let's run this test generator and see what happens. And then I probably won't go through all this. Um, I'll at least go through the PR, but I'm not actually gonna write the test in this stream. If that's something you're interested in, let me know on Twitter or in the comments, and maybe I'll do that next week. Uh, but let's go ahead and run this. This one actually will take just a second. So in the meantime, let's do a git pull on the latest of that and go ahead and push that up. Something else I probably want to go ahead and do is enable Sentry on this, now that we know the site's live again, to help me find any errors without tests. It, it's probably good to turn on the uh, bug tracking. Um, I use Sentry uh, for some of my uh, projects, so it wouldn't take much to just tack that on. So I'll probably do that off stream here in a minute. Uh, it would have never let me know in about the 500. I would need like, oh dear, or something like that. Um, to site monitor, but 
Again, it's not a mission critical site, so I'm not I'm not super worried about it being down. Like it's kind of slightly embarrassing, but it's not a huge deal. Okay, test generator ran. Okay, so the test generator, what it does is it basically does some static analysis on your project using route list. So just to kind of demonstrate that, if we use uh, PHP artisan route list, you actually get a lot of metadata about your application. You get the HTTP method to send a request, you get the URL to or potentially the route name, you know which controller within the application that is, as well as which middleware that's using, which gives you, again, other information. Either it's a web or an API request, um, it's a guest, you don't have to be authenticated, or vice versa, it has auth on it, so you have to be authenticated. Using this information, I can actually generate, or shift, can generate uh, a pretty good HTTP test suite for your application with a lot of the um, hard, not hard work, but grunt work, uh, tedious work of setting up, making the requests, stubbing out models, calling, you know, factories, all that kind of stuff, uh, you know, asserting on the response, was it 200 or whatever. It can build all that stub data for you um, instead of just simply, you know, just making a new PHP unit test uh, all the time. So it, it really builds up a lot of that code for you and begins to write uh, the test. So let's kind of look at what that does. Um, so again, it includes some packages, uh, one of which is mine, one of is, is a factory generator. Uh, it runs the uh, model factory bit here. So um, inside here we see that like, for example, an attendee factory, it sniffed out from the database uh, that it was a workshop ID and a user ID. Now these should probably be model references. So again, there's some room to improve this. All that's noted in the uh, PR uh, comments. We see that it did do it well here. So my guess is this attendee did not have those relationships in the model. And so it thinks it's just uh, fake data. So I can clean that up myself. Uh, but the point is it generated factories for all of my models. That's pretty awesome. Uh, the beefy one though is the HTTP test. So let's take a look at this real quick and then I'll probably end, um, or well, I'll pull this down and try to run it and I'll end the stream there. So what it does is, again, it uh, it marks all the tests incomplete with just the message that, hey, it was generated by shift, you still need to do some work, but uh, it did, again, uh, send a uh, request, in this case it knew it was a post, to the specific route, uh, it needs to do the um, request data, so that's on you, and then of course asserts that it's okay, or maybe it should assert created here, uh, again, some to-dos for you to, to do the rest. Uh, but something that maybe does a little more, uh, again, is if it can tell certain things like a get request to index, it can assert OK. It asserts the view because it noticed a view in your return, and it made sure that uh, it had some workshops. So again, more work that you would want to do. I might do that on a future stream. If you're interested, let me know. Um, but yeah, the test generator, again, builds all this stuff up. Uh, you know, and really, really kind of gives you a jump start on your test. It doesn't, I wouldn't go as far as to say it writes them for you, but it definitely is like artisan make test on steroids, right? It's a very, very intelligent artisan make test. And it's something actually I'm, I'm going to work on a little bit more for two reasons. One, I think it can do maybe a better job in, in this area to know what kind of request data to send. Uh, but also, also now with the pest converter um, available through Shift, maybe an option to generate pest tests instead of PHP unit tests. So I will be revisiting this shift uh, over the next few weeks. So I think there's, um, I, th I think it's pretty cool, but I think it's gonna get even better is the point. So with that said, let's pull this down and see, demonstrate that maybe at least the tests even run. So get uh, fetch origin, get check out that, and then Let's do a composer update to get those packages because otherwise I'm going to have a bit of an issue there. Uh, okay. See you, Patrick. Yeah, thanks for joining. Steven, can you shift to add tests to an existing? But yes, um, this doesn't care if you have tests or not. It will generate these idiomatic tests regardless. However, if it sees that there is a test that already exists with that name, uh, in this case, if we go in and look at the test, it follows kind of a um, hierarchical naming pattern. So like HTTP controllers, this would be, you know, app HTTP controllers. So it follow, it mimics your app structure is the point. 
So if you already had an attendee controller test, it would call this one attendee controller test dot shift dot PHP. And then you could merge them up yourself. So yes, it will generate and potentially fill any missing gaps. Uh, but you kind of have to figure out how you want to structure those at the end. So there will be a little bit of extra uh, manual steps uh, for that if you already have an existing test suite, but still probably worth it to your point because it, it could fill in some blanks. With generating post requests, you could look at rules. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, if we see that you're using a form request, we could jump into that form request and make sure we're sending any of those required um required fields and so forth. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, and even in the controller, we could look for inline validation to see, you know, what it, it so yeah, exactly. It, it takes a bit of intelligence, but, but there are ways to find that out to, again, make it incrementally better. And this is something that's getting used more, which is great. It means that um, more people are testing their applications, which is not only good uh, practice as a developer, it's good for the community because it kind of raises, um, that coding standard. And it's honestly, it's great. It's great for shift. I love being able, you know, upgrading is, is great that it's automated, but being able to see, you know, down here, I don't even have any checks, but being able to see a green checkbox here that all your tests passed after you automated an upgrade to like Laravel 8.x or, or Laravel 9 in January. I mean, that just really completes the circle for me, right? So anything I can do to, to help push that is really, um, really awesome is, is really, I'm glad to do it. So, so yeah, I'll definitely be checking that out. Uh, okay. Let's see if these run. And again, they won't pass, but let's see if PHP unit runs. So vendor bin PHP unit, PHP declares, ah, oh, fucking Mac. Sorry. <laughs> Let me bring up Docker so we can prove this and then I'll end the stream. But, um, yeah, basically like, uh, if you look at, on Mac, I don't have uh, anything fancy set up, but basically if you look on Mac and we like grep for I and I, we'll see that like their name for the Mac PHP version is like, they do some stupid crap in here, like to be removed. And that actually kills PHP's version checker underneath. So you actually can't use uh, the built-in PHP version for any kind of like static analysis. Oh my God, our service. Yes, Docker, fine, take take my life, I get it. Um, all right, anyway, once Docker decides to actually start and not ask me a thousand questions, we'll see if we can run these tests. And by run, I, I hopefully would just see a bunch of like dots and I's, right? Because everything's marked incomplete. But if it runs, it's proof that it gave me a test suite and it's running those tests, I just need to go fill in the blanks. All right, is Docker, Docker's thinking about it. Bear with me for a second. So I will, um, I'll probably do this, do this um, in another stream, I think. I think that would be worthwhile because there's not that many controllers. There's only four controllers, form requests, and, and like one command. So I think it'd be very easy to, um, to kind of get this in shape. Um, so I think I'll do that. But in the meantime, let's just see if it runs, right? So let's swap over to Docker and vendor bin PHP unit. And there we go. That's exactly what we want. Oh, we got a failure. Uh, what is this failure? Let's just see. Oh, I don't have a local database. It's trying to use SQL. That makes sense. So if I finish setting up this environment uh, to probably just use, um, in fact, it should have been using where is PHP unit? Oh, this is commented out. Here we go. Yeah, that's actually that's actually on the list to um, to fix, but this should fix that, I think. Oh, still got a failure. All right. Well, it's still trying to use no such table workshops. So maybe maybe I don't maybe I'm missing a migration or something for workshops. I don't know. I'll have to look into this. But uh, the point is, it is definitely running the test suite. Um, those exceptions are a bit. Oh, SQLite doesn't support multiple. There we go. 
So that's the issue. I probably have a migration that it's choking on for SQL Lite. So I'll need to configure this to, to use a MySQL database, and then we can start building out the test. So that might be something I do in a future live stream. Again, if you're interested in that, let me know in the chat, the comments, Twitter, wherever, and maybe I'll do that one day next week. So thanks you all for joining live. I uh, hope you got that out. Again, definitely not trying to be super sales pitchy or anything, just wanted to demonstrate being able to upgrade your application, uh, obviously using Shift, but also some tips on how to do that uh, effectively, efficiently, uh, as well as uh, take the time that you save to, to run some other things to improve the quality of life when you're working on your application uh, with tests, with modern Laravel, etc. So thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.